In this video, we'll evaluate limits at infinity using algebraic techniques. Let's find the limit as x goes to infinity of 5x squared minus 4x divided by 2x cubed minus 11x squared plus 12x. Notice that both the numerator and the denominator are getting arbitrarily large as x goes to infinity. One way to see this is by estimating the graphs. The numerator looks like a parabola pointing upwards, and the denominator looks like a cubic with this kind of shape, approximately. So both of them are heading towards infinity as x goes to infinity. So this is an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. And just like with the 0 over 0 indeterminate forms that we saw in an earlier video, an infinity over infinity indeterminate form could turn out to be absolutely anything. So just like with the 0 over 0 indeterminate forms, it can be helpful to use algebra to rewrite the expression in a different form that makes it easier to evaluate. A nice trick for this kind of rational function is to factor out the highest power of x that you can from the numerator and then do the same thing in the denominator. For the numerator, I'm going to factor out x squared because that's the highest power of x I see. And in the denominator, I'll factor out an x cubed, which is the highest power there. So rewriting, I can write this as the limit of x squared times 5 minus 4 over x. Because when I factor out an x squared from 4x, that's like dividing 4x by x squared, it turns into 4 over x. Similarly on the bottom here, I get x cubed times 2 minus 11 over x plus 12 over x squared. Because factoring out an x cubed is the same as dividing each term by x cubed and pulling the x cubed out to the side. Now I can rewrite again by canceling an x squared from the top and the bottom to get the limit of 1 over x times 5 minus 4 over x over 2 minus 11 over x plus 12 over x squared. Now as x goes to infinity, 4 over x goes to 0, just like 1 over x went to 0. 11 over x also goes to 0, and 12 over x squared goes to 0. In all of these situations, because the x, or x squared, is going to infinity, the fraction divided by x, or divided by x squared, is going to 0. So I end up with 1 over x, which is itself going to 0, times something that's going to 5 halves. And therefore, the limit for the entire expression is 0 times 5 halves, or 0. I've actually been applying limit laws to do these last steps, which is fine, since all my component functions have finite limits, something that wasn't true in my original expression when it looked like infinity over infinity. Next example, let's try the same thing for the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 10x plus 2 divided by 2x cubed plus x squared plus 5. I encourage you to stop the video and try it for yourself first. Factoring out x cubed from the top and x cubed from the bottom, we can rewrite the limit as the limit of x cubed times 3 plus 6 over x plus 10 over x squared plus 2 over x cubed divided by x cubed times 2 plus 1 over x plus 5 over x cubed. Now the x cubes cancel and all these pieces here are going to 0. So when the dust clears here, our limit is just 3 halves. In the next example, we factor out the highest power x to the fourth from the top and factor out an x squared from the bottom and cancel as much as we can. Now all these pieces are going to 0, so our limit is the same as the limit of x squared times 1 over negative 5. As x goes to negative infinity, x squared is positive and goes towards positive infinity. Multiplying it by negative a fifth turns it negative, 
but doesn't stop it from getting arbitrarily large in magnitude. So the final limit is then negative infinity. Let's look at these three examples again more informally, using a heuristic argument to reach the same conclusions. In the first example, in the numerator, 5x squared dominates because 5x squared is much larger in magnitude than 4x when x gets very large. In the denominator, the term 2x cubed dominates because x cubed is the highest power, and so 2x cubed is much larger than any of the other terms when x is large. If we ignore all the lower power terms and just focus on the highest power terms in the numerator and denominator, we can rewrite our limit as the limit as x goes to infinity of 5x squared over 2x cubed, which is the same as the limit of 5 over 2x, which is 0 as x goes to infinity. Similarly, if we just focus on the highest power terms in the numerator and denominator in this second example, we get the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 3x cubed over 2x cubed, which is just the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 3 halves, which is 3 halves. In the third example, we get the limit of x to the fourth over negative 5x squared, which is the limit of x squared over negative 5, which is negative infinity as before. In general, for rational functions, looking at the highest power terms gives you a reliable shortcut for calculating limits and infinity. And as in these examples, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the limit as x goes to infinity or negative infinity is zero. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the limit is just the quotient of the coefficients of the highest power terms. And finally, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then the limit is going to be plus or minus infinity. These shortcut rules are handy, but it's also important to understand the technique of factoring out highest power terms, a technique that can be used to calculate limits at infinity in other situations as well. So let's look at a slightly trickier example. The limit as x goes to negative infinity of the square root of 13x squared minus 3x plus 2 divided by 5x plus 6, and a limit as x goes to infinity of the same quantity. Again, we can try to factor out highest power terms. Inside the square root, the highest power is x squared. So let me rewrite. And on the denominator, the highest power is x. Splitting up the square root into two factors, which is okay to do because both of the factors inside the square root sign are positive here, I can rewrite the square root of x squared as the absolute value of x. I need the absolute value sign because the square root of x squared is positive and x itself has to be negative as x tends to negative infinity. Since the absolute value of x is positive and x is negative but has the same magnitude, this quotient here is always negative 1 as x goes to negative infinity. As in the previous examples, these terms go to 0 so we're left with the limit of negative 1 times the square root of 13 over 5. In other words, negative the square root of 13 over 5. When we calculate the limit as x goes to infinity of the same expression, our calculation stays the same up to here. But this time, x is positive since it's going towards positive infinity. So the square root of x and x are both the same thing, and their quotient is just 1. Again, these other quantities go to 0, and so our limit is 1 times the square root of 13 over 5, which is the square root of 13 over 5. This example is kind of interesting because we're ending up with two different limits as x goes to infinity and negative infinity. And in fact, if you graph this function, you'll see that it really does have two different horizontal asymptotes as well as a vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote occurs at x equals negative 6 fifths, 
which we can find by setting the denominator 5x plus 6 equal to 0. As our final example, let's look at the limit as x goes to infinity of the square root of 3 plus x squared minus x. It might be tempting to try to apply limit laws and try to write this as a difference of limits. But since the first term here goes to infinity as x goes to infinity, and the second term here, x, is also going to infinity, if I tried to apply the limit laws, I'd get something like infinity minus infinity, which isn't well defined. It's another indeterminate form that could be anything at all. Instead, what do you think we should do? The square root sign is really making things difficult, making it hard to simplify. So let's use the conjugate trick again. It worked so well for us in the past. So the conjugate of the square root of 3 plus x squared minus x is the square root of 3 plus x squared plus x. And what I'd like to do is multiply in the numerator and in the denominator by this conjugate. Distributing out, I get the square root of 3 plus x squared squared plus x times the square root of 3 plus x squared minus x times the square root of 3 plus x squared minus x squared. And then the same thing on the bottom here as the conjugate itself. Simplifying a bit, we get the limit of 3 plus x squared minus x squared over the square root of 3 plus x squared plus x. And the numerator simplifies to just 3, which is wonderful. The denominator, unfortunately, still looks a bit complicated. But all is not lost, because now in the denominator, both the first term and the second term, they're both going to infinity. There's no negative sign here to make things cancel out and give us something that we don't know what happens. So, so both of these terms are getting arbitrarily large, which means their sum has to also be an arbitrarily large positive number. If we divide 3 by a denominator gets this turning into a larger and larger positive number, that limit has to be 0. So we've evaluated this crazy square root limit using the conjugate trick, along with our basic knowledge about limits at infinity. So in that last example, we used the conjugate trick. But in all the other examples, we relied heavily on just one main idea, the idea of factoring out the highest power terms. We also noticed that informally, to calculate limits at infinity for rational functions, we can just focus on the highest power terms and ignore everything else.